this down so I forgot to print out the scriptures for it. The what? The scriptures. I was going to print those out for you and I completely forgot. Oh, you talk to me. Oh, help if I not do that. Yeah, you. Yeah, I'm talking to you. I forgot to print those out for you. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Give me just a moment. Is this my phone or yours? This is your phone. My smart phone. This is your phone. Welcome to our live broadcast. Minor adjustments. All right. There we go. There you are, sir. Let me get this one, sir. And then we will begin. Welcome, welcome, welcome. We welcome you all for coming to our live broadcast. I know there's other places you could have been and other churches that you may have could have gone to this morning, but we thank you for coming to our live broadcast. As, as you know, we're coming up on a holiday. And we ask that you please, 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 please be careful out in that sun. It is hot. I know on Wednesday, I mowed the lawn. And I came in and I told Pastor over her, I said, my Gosh, I started at 7.30ish, but it felt like it was 150 degrees out there. And I said, I don't know how people who work in this actually work, because it was just, it was like it was a, you open your mouth and it's like the heat went in your mouth. And of course, I have to wear a face mask when I mow because of my allergies and things. And I kept thinking to myself, I changed that mask, I don't know how many times. And it seemed like the sweat was just soaking it up so fast. And I said, gosh, I'd be glad when I get done. And when I tell you when I was done, I was done. I said, I'm done. I'm, I'm not doing anything else. It's, it's the backyard. Can't nobody see it. <laughs> so there was a couple of things I didn't do in the backyard because it was so hot. But anyways, I don't know what took me on to that. But just please, please be careful. Make sure you stay hydrated. Drink plenty of water, which you carry plenty of water. And if you're going to be out on the beaches, make sure you carry some extra water. We don't need no one to go out and get sick. And please, parents, make sure you get your children out the car. Make sure you put your purse back there. With whatever you got to do to remind you to get that child out of the car. Put your purse back there. Put your billfold back there. Put whatever you need to put back there so that way we don't have any kids left in the car. I mean, I tell you what, you know how you feel out there. You imagine what that child felt like sitting in that car hot. So make sure you get those kids out of the car. This morning, I kind of worked on this and I kind of left it alone. And I said, I just don't know because you know how you... You maybe not know how when you kind of putting something together, but then at the same time, your mind keeps trying to change you in a different direction. And then when you look at that different direction, it's like, that really don't sound like something that I need to say or what I need to use. But my focal scripture is Ephesians chapter 4, verses 22 through 24. That's Ephesians chapter 4, verses 22 through 24. And I and please forgive me, I forgot to pray. I mean, let me pray us in. I, you know, I'm trying to jump ahead of myself. And Lord, we thank you for this day, and we thank you for many, our many. Uh, we thank you for all that you do for us, Lord. We thank you for another day that was not promised, Lord. And Lord, we thank you for all of our family and our friends and our community and our neighbors, Lord. We thank you for each and every one of them, Lord. We thank you for our children, our grandchildren, our great-grandchildren, Lord. And Lord, we ask that you touch each and every one of us, Lord. 
from the tops of our heads to the soles of our feet, as far as east as to west, Lord. That you reshape us, remold us, and rewrite our stories, Lord. That you heal our bodies where we need to be healed, Lord, and save us where we need to be saved, Lord. And Lord, we thank you for the healings that we've already received, Lord. And Lord, we ask that you go in the, ho the hospital rooms, the nursing homes, Lord, and the ones that are on hospice, Lord, that you raise them up, Lord. And Lord, when they get up, they'll give your name all the praise, the honor, and the glory, Lord. And we thank you for every church, Lord, that are opening their doors up, Lord, to those that are in the heat, Lord, to the for the uh, the homeless, Lord, those that are out in the war torn countries, Lord. We have, we thank you for those churches, Lord. And Lord, we thank you for the pastors, Lord, that are being obedient to your word, Lord. And we ask that you touch every household that's represented by your name, Lord. And that we ask that you touch and start with the pastors, Lord. That you continue to give them the bread of heaven, Lord. And that when they turn around, Lord, and receive it, Lord, that they'll pass it on to us, Lord. And that we'll turn around and we'll reach someone else, Lord. And that we'll pass it on, Lord. And we say thank you, Lord. We thank you for the food that we eat, Lord. We thank you for the water that we drink, Lord, and that we bathe in, Lord. We thank you for it all, Lord, because we know that you're the one that made it all, Lord. And we say thank you, Lord. And, Lord, we ask that you be with those astronauts, Lord, that are stuck off in space, Lord. We ask that you protect them, Lord, as they wait on someone to come to retrieve them, Lord. And we say thank you, Lord. We thank you for giving us the ability to go to the moon, Lord. But we ask that you be in every mission, Lord, and that you continue to pat, uh, protect our astronauts, Lord, and their families, Lord, that you comfort them, Lord, as their families are eager and waiting for them to come home, Lord. And we say thank you, Lord. Lord, we ask that you touch all the pilots, Lord, that are flying planes, Lord, taking loved ones and friends and family, Lord, wherever they're going, Lord. We ask that you be with them, Lord, that when they get on the plane, Lord, that they're in right mind, Lord, that they're able to lift that plane up off the ground, Lord, but they're also to return it and land it on ground, Lord, without any hurt, harm, or danger, Lord. And we say thank you, Lord. We ask that you give traveling grace to those that are going to work, going to church, Lord, wherever they may be going, Lord, and that you protect them as they come back home, Lord, and we say thank you, Lord, and Lord, that you continue to be with our children as they're at home for the summer, Lord, that you protect them, Lord, that you be in the midst, Lord, and we say thank you, Lord, and we ask this in all your wonderful son Jesus' name, amen, amen. and amen. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, we thank you, we thank you. I want to say thank you to Pastor for giving me another opportunity to come before y'all. I know sometimes he'd be kind of wondering what she going to talk about today. As I was sitting here, as I was telling you before, I was, now what did I do with my message? Okay, where did I put it? <laughs> it done disappeared on me. Hold on. Let me figure out where it went. I just had it here just a minute. I don't know if I exit out of it or what. Okay, that's yours. Okay, where did I put that thing? It done disappeared. Let me cut, delete this right here because I don't need that. And I put it behind. There it is. I stuck it behind there. There it is. I hid it from myself. But I was thinking this morning, you know, we talk about a lot of stuff, you know, <laughs> as being the church of God and how we're supposed to look and how we're supposed to dress and how we're supposed to act when we're out and abroad. And when you look at this scripture that I told you about, Ephesians chapter 4, verses 22 to 24, and I'm going to read that to you. It says that you put off concerning the former conversations of the of the, the old man, which is corrupt according to this deceit, lust, deceitful lust. Verse 23, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Verse 24, and that ye put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. I know a lot of times we read stuff in the Bible and we really don't know what it, what they're trying to say. So I looked up the word makeover, and the word makeover is a noun, and it means a complete transformation or remodeling of something, especially a person's hairstyle, makeup, or clothes. Or even when you buy a house, you always want to you renew the house to make it look like what you wanted to do. Well, that's the same thing God wants to do with each of one of us in this word. Because, you know, we, we always, we all have, we don't need to, need to say that we didn't. We've all fallen off the beaded path. And when we ask for that makeover, he's going to put us back on that potter's wheel. Mm -hmm. And he's going to work with it. Like, you know, you see potters when they're making a dish. They're constantly molding it and, and getting all the kinks out. That's what it is when we ask for the Lord to make us over. So I'm not talking about your dress. 
when you look at first Peter chapter three, verses three through four, let me put that in there for you. And that reads, who's adorning, let it not be that outward adorning of planting of the hair and of wearing of gold or of putting on of a pearl, but let it be the hidden man of the heart and that which is not corruptible, even the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit, which is in the sight of God of great price. So see, that's what it's telling you. See, we when we go out and we buy clothes, we got to try it on, and then we got to go get the shoes, and then we got to get that purse to make sure that purse accessorizes the shoes, and then the outfit goes with the purse and the shoes. But see, we spend less time thinking about what do we look like on the inside. See, Pastor talked about last week about dead bones. I'll get to that in a minute. But when 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 when, the, when God gets you, He wants to go in there and He wants to cut all that bad out. He wants to get rid of all of that. Put it to the side. See, when he says that we're his children, he wants us walking and looking like him. The same way our parents do. When our parents are doing whatever they want, we're doing, they want to make sure that they're children. If I'm going to correct your child, I need to make sure that my child is right. So how can I correct yours when mine's not right? So when our parents raising us, they're constantly telling us. That you have to do this like this. You have to do it like that. You can't do that. See, that's what a real parent does. If they correct their child. I don't care how bad the situation may be. But you have to correct them. So that way they get back on the right path. And they do things the way you want them to do it. That's the same thing that God wants for us as his children. He wants us that in his word he said that he made us in his likeness. So therefore we have to walk like him. We have to uh, talk like him. We have to look like him. We can't just put on whatever we want, walk around, and then look at somebody mad because they're looking at you. You put it on. I didn't tell you to put it on. You put that on. Praise God. And we have to be careful and mindful of all that we're doing, especially when we tell somebody we're a Christian and we go to church. We salt and light. Eh? We have to be salt and light. I mean, you got to be in season and out of season. Everything that's going on. I have an incident this week. Me and, I, you know, I order all my husband over here's medication. So I sent the Dallas VA a message on a prescription that had expired. And I didn't realize that it was at that point. So when I needed the, the, the medicine, it had expired. So I sent the message to the doctor asking him to unexpire his medication so I can order him a new prescription. And I get this message back from the provider saying, gives me this prescription and says you have three refills on it. And I was like, why is he talking about that? I don't need that. So I came back and I told him again. I said, the prescription that I need has expired. I need you to unexpire it so I can go in and order it. So I'm thinking, okay. I get back on there and I'll be, lo and behold, this provider come right back talking to me about this previous medication. Well, even in my subject matter on the comment, it had the prescription, had the prescription number. But yet he kept going back to this other prescription. And I was getting furious past the day. I was getting mad. I said, Did he think I'm stupid that I don't know what I'm talking about? So I went back, sent him another message and said, I'm not crazy. I know what I'm talking about and I know what I need. So I took a picture of the box and I put it in there. And I said, if you're still not understanding what I'm saying, I sent you an attachment. Look at the attachment. Still no response. 24 hours, ain't heard nothing from them. They hadn't even read the message. By that time, I'm pissed. So I get on the phone and I call the patient after. See, I said, I told a young man on the phone, I said, I'm not understanding what's so hard about this. I said, I told him what I needed. And I even told him that this prescription is supposed to be done every hour. I even told him, I said, that the, the prescription had expired. Why are they still constantly talking to me about this other prescription? And he looked at the medication. He says, well, yeah, I see that. And he went to go tell me. I said, but, sir, that's not the one I'm talking about. I said, what I just said is it's the one that says every hour. And so he kept scrolling down. And I said, and his prescription is also has it expired. And he says, oh, yeah, I see exactly what you're talking about. And he said, just one moment. So I don't know if he had access to the messages that was going back and forth or not. So he came back and he said, I see what you were talking about. He said, hold on just one moment. Let me copy and paste something. So he went and I don't know what he was copying and pasting. But he came back and he told me well, at that time I didn't know what it was. 
So he came back and he said, yeah, he said, I copied it and pasted that. He said, let me see how I can escalate this so that way Mr. Hines can get his prescription. So he was on there and he was just typing. I don't know what all he talked but he typed for like 10 minutes. He was just typing, 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 typing. And he said, um, did you try calling? I said, yes. I said, I called the pharmacy. I said, and the pharmacy said that they see this prescription that is expired. They can't do anything until the doctor unexpires it. So he said, okay. So he's still typing, 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 typing. So he says, okay. He said, Miss Hines, he said, I think I got it together. I said, yeah. I said, I was telling uh, Lewis. And then the guy started laughing. And I'm thinking, what is he laughing about? And he said, no, you didn't tell me. And then I remembered he had told me his name was Lewis. So it was really funny. So it turned out to be a funny conversation. And so lo and behold, three hours later, I get on there. And there was a response from the lady that, I sent that to the pat to the doctor for them to um, to uh, uh, unexpire it. I'm like three straight days we've been fighting about this prescription, and I was you know you get so mad at people because you be like, what 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 is it? I felt like you know if you ever mo watched the movie uh, Ghost Dad with um, oh Bill Cosby in it where he gets upset with the girl's boyfriend he goes through the phone and was, and was shaking choking a man that's how I felt like doing with this provider how are you not understanding what I'm saying I already told you what I'm looking for why are we talking about something other than that and see that's how the devil will do he'll mm -hmm. he'll use people and he'll use people and he'll keep and using he people and just keep on you know pushing make magnifying the issue to where you get uh, out of character mm -hmm. and then you start talking crazy and then you start cussing that folk but I didn't get to that point, but I was upset be because I said, yes, be angry and see a night. So I just, that last message I sent to her, I was like, I'm not crazy and I'm not understanding why you're making this harder than it has to be. So that's just what I said. I wasn't talking crazy. I didn't type in no curse words and none of that. But I was just like, are you people really crazy? Are you not really reading what I'm trying to say? Are you just trying to hurry up and get done to you? So you can go somewhere else or do something else. But that's how people do you sometimes. Sometimes they'll just, that devil, he'll know how to just keep on turning that screw and tighten it and tighten it and see how far it, it'll take for you to snap. And that's what this renewing of the, the this makeover is about. Yes. Lord, I know I have fallen. And I'm shattered and I'm broken. But I know I can't fix it. I need you to do it. Yes. And when we put our life in his Come hands. On, you and we put our life in his oh, hands, sister. not in our hands, not in our sister's hands, not in our mama's hand, oh, not in our daddy's hand. But when we put our life in his hands, he can fix all of that. You know, when you look at this world and you look at all the intricacies, when you even look at the human body, how he specified for the man supposed to be made and how the woman was supposed to be made and how the man can do this and how the woman can do that it's like what kind of man a guy that even when you look at fishes in the water they're all different shapes different colors you got fishes that eat this and fishes that eat that. And then you get to looking at all their interests. Some fishes have to be in salt water. Mm -hmm. Some fishes have to be in regular water. Mm -hmm. It's like, how do we say that he did not do this? Mm -hmm. That was God. All of this mm -hmm. is God. We're not doing anything but using what he gave mm -hmm. us. All of what we have is because of him. Yeah. We can't ever take credit for, oh, well, I did that. No, you didn't. No. You used what he gave you to make whatever. And we need to constantly be thanking him, even for our mind. That all comes from him. Some of us got some minds. Boy, when I tell you we so smart, we don't know what to do with it. That's because of God. And you need to be thanking him for this mind that you gave me. To be a doctor, a lawyer, whatever. That is all because of God. It's because he took you and he used you. And you need to make sure that when you're telling somebody, God, he's the one that helped me do this. And we didn't, I had a doctor one time, I was talking to him, and he was telling me, he was getting ready to do surgery on me. And he said, you know, he said, I used to think all the time, I used to go around and tell people, it's me, it's me, it's me. He said, one day, it hit me. I can't do anything apart from God. And God is the one that gave me the ability to do this. And he said, so now when I talk to my patients and people talk to me, he said it's because of God yeah. that we have to make sure that we give him credit for everything yes. that goes on in our lives. It's not us. 
We didn't even wake ourselves up this morning. It wasn't even that alarm clock. It was God. He woke us up. Did you take the time to say, Lord, thank you for yeah. another day? We have to always be aware and say, thank you, Lord, for another day. Sometimes we get up, we have to get up out of bed and we go running. We don't even say thank you. We might go to the potty and never say, Lord, thank you for another day. We might even pick up our phone and get to scrolling and we still haven't told him thank you. We need to make sure that we tell him thank you for that. So as we continue to go on, the, and all of this is a makeover. It's all to reshape us into our mindsets. We got to we got to reset this mind because this mind is stuck on, I got to do this, I got to do my hair, I got to brush my teeth, I got to make sure my clothes are on, I got to make sure I get that bagel with that whatever you're going to put on it, my coffee, and we still hadn't said thank you. Then we get in our car, we turn the key on, and then we back out of the driveway and we head down the road and we still ain't said thank you. Then we get into our job and all Hades done broke loose. And we trying to figure out what is really going on. Did you tell the Lord thank you? Did you ask the Lord to protect you while you're riding up and down the road? Did you ask the Lord to help you on that job? I had an incident one time that we and one of my directors got into a well, I tell you, we had a heated discussion. We had a heated discussion. Lucille come out. Oh, Lucille came out that day. <laughs> and I had to <laughs> tell the Lord. And here I was. I told the Lord, I need you to put your hand over my mouth and your arm around my shoulder. I got in there and I forgot all about what I had asked him to do that woman but i tell you she tried to, to put do all she could and finally she said you're being insubordinate i said no actually you are and i didn't say nothing to her after that and then she said now look at you oh she thought she was doing some look at you you ain't got nothing to say but oh she was just laying it on thick and said i don't understand what your problem i said let me tell you something see when you called me on that phone i asked the lord I said, Jesus, I need you to put your hand over my mouth and your arm around my shoulder. And he's doing what I asked him to do. Right. <laughs> and she sat back in her chair. Uh -huh. She looked at me for a minute or two and she said, can we start over? Oh, yeah, we can start over. But see, you can't just talk to me any old kind of way. Think I'm just going to sit here and let you talk to me like I'm whoever. No, see, sometimes you... We, we do get out of character, and we have to ask the Lord, forgive me for how I got out of character. Yeah. But at the same time, we got to ask him to be in the midst. Yeah. So you got to ask him to send that angel before you. Right. So that way, when you get there, it can stop you. Calm your temper down. We, we, we can get so ugly and evil and then be on Facebook talking about God, 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 God. What God are you talking about? Because see, if your God, that's the father of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and touched your mouth and said, wait a minute, stop, you following the wrong God. Yes, sir. If your God ain't telling you yes, not to hit that girl next to you because she slapped you, you following the wrong God. Mm -hmm. See, when we following the right God, and he puts that angel on here and an angel over here, one of them is going to be telling you the right way, and the other one going to tell you, hey, keep on, keep on, keep on. Yeah. You need to knock that one off your shoulder and start listening to this one over here, because this one over here is going to make sure you stay in character. Even to our friends, let me tell you something. If your friends ain't telling you you're wrong, you got the wrong friends. Because let me tell you something. Yesterday, we was in a, we went to get our hair done, and I was at the hair salon. And we had went to sign a drive-in, picked up an order, came back, sat down. First thing we noticed... One of the ladies' food wasn't there. We paid for it, but the food wasn't there. So one of the ladies went back to the hairdress. I mean, went back to sign it to get it. Well, while she's on her way back, I bite into my hamburger. Oh, what is wrong with this burger? So I thought, okay, maybe it's just because I just had that candy. So I took another bite out of it. Man, something ain't right. Opened it up, boy. Had all kind of mayonnaise and ketchup on there. I told that people that I wanted it dry with the veggies on the side. They had ketchup, mayonnaise, and oh, I was hotter than fish grease. Did you call her? No, mm -hmm. the lady had, I called her, and I, yeah, I did call her. I said, hey, I need you to give me another burger. I said, this burger's got mayonnaise and ketchup on it. I'm up here getting my hair washed. I can't even eat my food because it's looking over there because it's messed up. So by the time I get my hair shampoo, my friend came back, and then she's got this look on her face, and I'm like, why are you looking at that? She's like that. She said, they told me I had to bring that burger back. I said, bring it back. Why? I said, did you get my burger? No, I can't even get your burger until I bring that burger back. Oh. What you mean? Oh, I'll tell you, but you know, I, that time, now I'm really mad. I got water in my hair. I'm ready to get in the car and go tell somebody off. And I said, you know, here's my card. Tell them to refund my money. 
and take all this stuff back. I don't even want it. Mm-hmm. So she said, I got it. I just be careful, be calm, give me your credit card. And so she went back to the restaurant and she came back. I don't know what she said to him. She said, but yeah, you try to be nice to people and you try. And I mean, they just had this order all messed up, just all me- Wait a minute, you read it back correctly. What happened? And it's like, who's in the kitchen cooking? Because they need to, they, you need to talk to them. Because when you, I see when people say not to give you, not to give something, it's either because they may be allergic to it. Do you know somebody can bite into something they're allergic to and make them real sick? Did you even think about that before you slap that mayonnaise and ketchup on there when it said dry? Did you even think about that? I was just like, we were just sitting up there, we would just talk about that. And they said, yeah, that's the devil, that's the devil, that's the devil. That's, that's the kind of friends you need. Mm-hmm. Even on the way home yesterday, I called Lewis. I said, baby, I said, you need to do your drops. And he said, are y'all on y'all's way home? I'm FaceTiming him. Why is he asking me if I'm on my way home? So I said, maybe. And I laughed and I hung the phone up. And Miss Carol said, is that? And I said, what? You a pastor's wife. Why did you tell him maybe? I said, because I was on FaceTime. I'm like, why he asking me something when he can see that I'm in the car on my way home? She said, but that still was wrong because that was a lie. You should have said yes. That's the kind of friends you're supposed to have. They're check supposed you, to check you. They're supposed to put you. Man. And I couldn't get mad. I said, you know what, Miss Carol? I said, you're right. I said, but I just figured since he's on FaceTime, he can see I'm in the car on my way home. But that's not the point. I still should have just said late. I should have said yes. That's the kind of stuff that we are supposed to be about. We're supposed to be correcting each other. I heard a man on the radio, one of the pastors saying that if your pastor is supposed to be your so-called friend and he's agreeing with your wrong, then he ain't a pastor. That's the same thing but for a friend. If they say they're your friend, then they should be telling you, hey, that ain't right. No, you shouldn't have said that. You shouldn't have done that. That's the stuff that we're supposed to do. We're supposed to be making sure we hold each other accountable. I don't care what the situation is or what's going on. Even Lewis, sometimes I'll say something. He'll say, you know, that ain't right. Well, he's right. No, that ain't right. I don't care if you had a bad thought up here. Devil, leave me alone. I have had to tell the devil several times sometimes, leave me alone. <laughs> I'm not I'm not even going to think about that. I'm not even. And even when you're talking to somebody and they're being ugly too, you have to remember that it's not that person that you're fighting. That's the devil. The devil is trying to kick you on the wrong path. He's trying to see if he can get you to fall off. But you have to remember, I'm not listening to you. I'm going to do it just like this. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to play that with you today. I mean, we, we can be having a good time, you know, good times. Nothing going on, and then somebody will show up and start some stuff. What are you going to do? Are you going to join in with the bad behavior? Are you going to be... No, we, we don't need to do that. No, we don't need to act like that. We don't need to say that. That's what you're supposed to do when you say that you're a Christian. Because everybody's looking at everything you're saying and what you're doing. And if you say you're a Christian, you're supposed to look better than everybody else. You're supposed to talk better. You're supposed to act better. And that's what this renewing of this body is. I'm not talking about how your dress look or do you have on the right colors, everyday matching. Because I'm going to tell you what, I'm the worst person at matching. I could care less if it match. If I want to put it on, I'm going to put it on. I don't care if it's a green shirt and purple shoes. If I want that green shirt and purple shoes on, I'm going to put that green shirt and purple shoes on. And don't come telling me that I match them because my response is going to be, I put on what I wanted. Um, and that's just the way it's going to be. That's just how I am. I don't care if Lewis get on me all the time. You know that don't match. Okay. Well, I'll keep right on going. Get in the car with my purse and go right on where I'm going. <laughs> like I'm not worried about all of that I could care less but we have to be worried about this inner man see when we when we leave here and go up there to see Jesus God, when you leave here and go to here to see Jesus you got to make sure that all that bad stuff ain't there when you get there you got to make sure that you got some love in you you got to make sure that you've shown mercy mm-hmm. you have got to show him that you've shown forgiveness because see that's what he's looking for I don't care how fine as wine as you think you may be or how sexified you think you are. He could care less about that. He could care less about what your PhD is. He could care less. 
He don't care what kind of letters you got after your name. He is looking at the character of your heart. Yes. How did you love that person that treated you wrong? How did you love that ex that did this? How did you love your brother when he did this? How did that is what he's looking at? That's what he's looking at when you when he look at your character. He's not worried about if whether your shirt is red and your pants is blue and your socks are green. He don't care about that. That's us. That's what we worry about. We more worried about what people see than man see. When you look at Romans chapter 13, verse 14. Romans chapter 13, verse 14. Yeah. That reads, but put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make not provision for the flesh. To fulfill the lust thereof. If we're doing anything other than that, we are on the wrong path. And we need to ask the Lord to put us back on. Come Let on. me read that again. Put Good on point. ye. Put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. And if you're saying that I'm walking and talking with Jesus, you need to make sure that everything that come out your mouth, that <laughs> Jesus is pleased with. <clears throat> Is he pleased with what I'm saying? Is he pleased with what how I'm acting? And if you can't say yes, I'm, you out of order. You need to, we, we need to get it fixed. And I'm saying you, but I'm talking to myself as well. We have to make sure that we're in order on everything and what everything that we're doing. Second Corinthians. Second Corinthians. Chapter 5, verse 17. That reads... Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. You see that word, those words, new creation. That means you got to, just like that person that buys a house and he wants to sell that house, he's got to go in there and he got to do some work. He got to hold out probably some walls. He got to do some painting. He got to redo the floors. He's got to do something to the the counters. He's got to go in. And that's the same thing. When you say that I'm walking with Jesus, you can't keep that old baggage on. You can't keep that old sin on. You got to let that go. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Mm -hmm. So when you say that, you can't look the same. You can't be still sitting on the corner drinking your booze. You can't be walking down the street with your butt hanging all out. When you say I'm walking with Jesus, it's a new creation. All that has to go away. Yes. So who performs this? So who performs this? Who's going to do this in us? See, he left us the Holy Ghost. That's See, that Holy Ghost is there to make sure and try to make sure that. Now, you can't sit up here. And say, what I'm doing is the honey, Holy Ghost don't understand that. He understands what this word says. This is what he understands. See, this word right here. He don't understand your interpretation of how you think you want to do something. Oh, oh, I'm going to go in here and read uh, 1 Chronicles chapter 9, verse 1. So all Israel were reckoned by, but then I'm going to go around and I'm going to say, well, the Bible said, blase, blase, so I can do this. If that's not what that Bible says, and you can't do it. You can't even go tell your kids that it's okay to do something if this word says not to do it. If that word says thou shalt not, and you go tell your child, oh, that's okay. You had an order, and you just might as well say you did that same sin your child done done because you don't told them that that's okay. If the Bible says don't do it, you ain't supposed to do it. You're not supposed to tell somebody else it's okay. You're not supposed to paraphrase it that, well, he said in this situation, you can know if it did say that. You can't do that. We have to follow this word. Is it hard? Yes, it is hard. But that's why he gave you the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is to help you. You have to make sure that Jesus is trying to reshape you and remold you to the person that he wants you to be. He wants you to be a loving wife. He wants you to be a loving husband. He wants you to be a loving mother. He wants you to be a loving father. He wants you to be a loving sister. He wants you to be everything that his word says. His word says that we're supposed to love people with a gaffe love. That means we look at the word love and we just, oh, well, they say, I love you, but do do you really love them? Do you really love them? Because if you really love them, some things you're going to have to change. Some things are going to look different. Mm-hmm. Some things are going to have to be different. Praise God. It's not all about you. <clears throat> it's about that. It's about that he got they love. That love that God gave you to love people. <clears throat> we sometimes have this crazy umption that 
Well, he done mistreated me five times, so I ain't got to speak to him no more. No, no the Bible says that you have to forgive. I don't care if he did it 20 times. You got still got to forgive. Yes. I don't care if he did it 100 times. The Bible says that you have to forgive. How can you ask God to forgive you when you can't even forgive the person that's sitting next to you? How do you expect him to forgive you? The Bible says that we have to forgive. <clears throat> If we want God to forgive us, we have to forgive. We got to be able to put that past you, okay? Yeah, my brother keeps tripping and he keep acting crazy. He keep doing whatever. Are you praying for him? Mm. Are you praying for him? Are you really praying for him? See, we we we'll, we'll, we'll complain about all of this, but are you praying for him? Are you getting on them, the rust, putting them rusty knees on the ground, or sitting on the side of the bed and say, "Lord, I don't know. I keep talking to him, but he ain't listening." Mm -hmm. But you just gotta keep praying. Lord, and keep praying. Eventually, it's going to rub off. It get there. It might take a couple of years. It get there. Somebody, but you have to keep praying. And that's what somebody prayed for us. I know I'm, I can tell you all the time. I tell you the story over and over again. My mama, she would get to the house. She come in the front door, and she opened her Bible. She had a Bible at the front door. And she'd stand there, and she'll read through her Bible. After she finished reading to the Bible, she'll take off her coat and hang it on the door, and she'll go to the bathroom. And she start praying. She's praying for us. That's what you're supposed to do. When you come in your house, you got to make sure that you're saturated with prayer. You got to make sure that you're saturated with, even when she had to discipline us, she would pray, Lord, help me. That's what we're supposed to do when we have to discipline our kids. Lord, help me to be able to, to, to teach them. Mm -hmm. That's what we're supposed to do. We, it all falls on the Lord. It's not us. <clears throat> That's him. We have to let the Holy Ghost direct us. Now I'm going to read you. <clears throat> I think I kept y'all a little too long. <coughs> First Corinthians chapter 6 verses 19 through 20. First Corinthians chapter 6 verses 19 through 20. And that needs, that reads, what? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own. Read that again. Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. It don't even belong to you. Which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own. It don't even belong to you. It belongs to the Lord. How, so how do you think that you could just keep on doing whatever you're doing and thinking that the Lord ain't going to say, well, hey, do you know who you really belong to? Sometimes we forget that. I'm, I'm, my mama had to tell me that one time a couple of times. That you don't even know who your mama is. I said, yeah. Well, you you just think that you're just going to do whatever you want to do and to think that that's okay. That's the way we, so we're going. We talk to our kids. is the same thing. The Lord is looking. Okay, and you over here talking to your kids crazy. What you doing? What are you doing? See, how few kids look at us and they see us acting crazy and doing what you think they're going to do. Act crazy and do the same foolishness you're doing. Verse 20, for ye are bought with a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. It all belongs to him. None of that belongs to us. <clears throat> Romans chapter 12, verses 1 through 2. Romans chapter 12, verses 1 through 2. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, Holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. He ain't asking us for much. Verse 2. And be not conformed to this, year, this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. See all of that right there? It's a transformation. When we ask the Lord, Lord, help me. Yes. We're asking for him to transform. Don't ask him if you don't mean him. Because <laughs> he going to keep you from going places that you ain't got no business going. And he going to let you know why you sitting there. I know one time I went to the club. And I'm sitting up in there and I'm looking at everybody else. And this guy walked over to me. He said, why are you here? I said, she asked me to come with her. So I'm just here with her. He said, do you know you look like a piece of dandruff in a loose comb? And I said, what? He said, you look like you so far out of place. You ain't even supposed to be here. I said, I, I said, I'm just here because she asked me. <laughs> Do you know when you go places and the Lord is really with you, you going to look like you out of place? That's what you're supposed to look. You're supposed to look different than everybody else. You ain't supposed to be acting like everybody else and doing what everybody else is saying. You're supposed to be a living sacrifice. 
And you're supposed to look like the Lord. People ought to be able to tell you you're a Christian before you open your mouth. Mm -hmm. Before you even say anything to them, they ought to be able to say, hey, she's a Christian and she's walking with the Lord. Mm -hmm. Not you saying I'm a Christian and girl, let me tell you how we turned it up, girl. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you how I slapped her up outside her head. Girl, let me tell you what I said to her and how many curse words I said to you. Man, that ain't what a Christian Take is supposed to do. As my mama would say, I worked this long to make this name, and you're not going to turn it up overnight. That's the way, the same way the Lord feel. Okay. I said you were a Christian, and you were just making me look really bad. I tell Lewis sometimes, I said, I get so sick of this country. I get so sick of it. I call it a non-Christian country, because I don't understand how we call it a Christian country, and we just... just, just the, 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 and I'm talking about the church. Now, I'm, I'm really talking about the church. How is it that things could go mm -hmm. on and the church just sits by and look? Nobody talking about it. Ain't nobody correcting anybody. It's just, you know, whatever you feel like doing, just do it. Now, that's not what it is. The church is supposed to be a, a standing up that, no, that ain't right. The Bible says that you forgive. The Bible says that you're not supposed to act like that. But we'll just sit back and we just look. We're looking. And he said that we're supposed to be the pillar of the truth. We're supposed to tell people. We're supposed to be the ones that say, you know what? That ain't not how that, that doesn't look right. That doesn't look like a godly woman. That doesn't look like a godly man. That's what we're supposed to be teaching our children. First Timothy chapter four, verse uh, 12. Let no man despise thy youth, but be thou an example of the believers in word, in conversation, in charity, in spirit, in faith, and in purity. Y'all, we got some work to do. <clears throat> that if we're not looking like a walking an example of Jesus Christ, <clears throat> we need we got some work to do. It says the but be thou an example of the believers in word, in conversation, in charity, in spirit, in faith, in purity. We got something we need to do. We got to make some changes. Psalm 51 verse 12. Restore unto, restore unto me the joy of thy salvation and uphold me with thy free spirit. That's what we should be asking the Lord to do, to restore us. Restore me, Lord. I know I've done something wrong. I said something I shouldn't have said, Lord. I need you to restore me, Lord. I need you to, as I tell my husband, to rewrite my story. Plant me on that potter's wheel. Put me back on there and turn me around until you give me all the crevices that are broken and shattered and, and, and put, put it back together. That's what we're supposed to be asking for. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 22. Let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. See, see that see 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 all these scriptures is telling us that we have to be cleaned. You know, we all we always talk about the cup where people are worried about washing that cup. It's got to be clean. But are we cleaning ourselves up in our, our own our own hearts? Are we reading the word and we see it? Oh well it says that I'm not supposed to do that. So I got to work on not doing that. Now we, we don't I don't believe that we even reading the word sometimes. Because I don't some if we do sometimes I just be like Okay, well, that word said that. Were they even listening? Because I even have to ask, like yesterday when Miss Carol got on me for what I did. And I said, yeah, I, said, I, I know. I said, but I just felt like since I was on FaceTime, he could tell that I was in the car and I shouldn't have to say that I was. But it, that was still wrong. That, that was, was not the right. That was out of order. And that's, that's what we have to be doing. We have to be reminding each other what this word says. Now, I can't be reminding you of, of stuff in the word that I'm sitting and doing wrong. Now, how that going to look right? I'm going to be trying to correct you. Uh, you know, you know. And I'm rocking around in, in, in dead man's bones just sitting and doing whatever. And you, you, it, it don't work like that. We got to make sure that we let the word, the word heal us of our infirmities. And then we got to reach out and try to help someone else. We all go through a change in our lives and we always got to refer back to this word. Did I do that right? Did I say that right? Was it was it ugly or was it just a 
how does they say it? Uh, a deep, a, de uh, a whipping, but a clean whipping. To where it was, okay, yeah, you told him, but was it seasoned correctly? I guess that's what I'm trying to say. Is 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 we we're always trying to correct sometimes, and sometimes we can be harsh when we correct people, but we can correct people without being ugly. Like I said, she wasn't ugly with me yesterday. She just told me that, and I received it because yes, that was wrong. I don't have no reason to be mad at her, be ugly, and still fuming at the mouth today because she said that. Because she was right. I was the one that was wrong. I told her, I said, yeah, you're right. And I told her that. And she started laughing. I said, no, seriously, you're right. I should have said, should have just said yes. <laughs> Not maybe. <laughs> maybe. What is that? Maybe. <laughs> I said, I'm still going down the road. I kept thinking. That's the word kept reminding me in my head. Maybe. Maybe. I was like, how many times is that word going to pop up in my head on this drive back home? Maybe. I said, yeah. And then, Hey, I mean, it's going to hurt. I'm going to tell you, it's going to hurt. When your mama go in there and spank your little bottom because, bottom because she told you to quit lying, she spanked your bottom because you said no instead of no ma'am. You did that. <laughs> and that's what the Lord going to do. He's going to spank your behind. And I, don't, I don't know how he's going to do it, but he's going to do it. Because I'll tell you what, I don't read the nuts spankers from the Lord and some of them jokers hurt pretty bad. Amen. I mean, and that's what you do. When you love somebody, you get on them. Hey, you know, don't say that. Amen. Amen. Why do you have to say that many curse words? My mom used to tell me that if you got to say that many curse words back to back, that shows your intelligence. <laughs> 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 what you really trying to say? Ooh, like I said, and my mama would say it again, like I said, if you got to say that many curse words back to back, that shows your intelligence. And look how quick we all stop cussing like that. You don't hear us question like a sailor like that. And she said, that tells your intelligence. I said, my mama, boy, she didn't play. I mean, when she laid it on you, she laid it on thick. And didn't really care how you felt about it. That's what the Bible told me I'm supposed to be. I'm supposed to be your mama, and that's just the way it is. I ain't your friend, and that's another one. I ain't your friend. <laughs> All right, ooh, why some of my other friends, I'm looking at their mamas, and I'm thinking, okay, why the I got to be so harsh and so bold? And a lot of them now say, I wish my mama was more like yours. And you rub off on other people. People see that. People feel that. And people are want to be around you because I know she's going to tell me the truth. That's what it's about, the truth. And that's that makeover. Lord, am I living right? Am I loving right? Am I walking according to your words? Mm -hmm. That's what that is. My last scripture for you, and then I'm going to let you go. Let me get it pasted in here for you. Or you can read it and then I'm going to let you go so you can watch your game or whatever you're looking at or going Olympics. to look at. Olympics. Yep. Colossians chapter 3 verse 10 through 12. And that's Colossians chapter 3 verses 10 through 12. And have put on the new man which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. Verse 11. Where there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcision or uncircumcision. Barbarian, Scythian, bond nor free, but Christ is all and in all. Verse 12, put on therefore as the elect of God, holy and beloved, bowels of mercies, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long suffering. See all of that? That's what he said we're supposed to put on. How many of us get up on or get up every morning and put that on? A lot of us don't even think about that. We just get dressed and go. He said, that's what we're supposed to put on. That's what we're supposed to be worried about. Instead of standing in a mirror looking at our top and our pants, make sure that you're carrying you some mercy and some kindness, some humbleness, some meekness and some long suffering. Speak to that person next to you, whether you've ever spoke to them, just say, hey, how you doing? Or just say good morning to them and smile. Make, it, make them feel like you mean it. See, a lot of times we'll say, I love you. And it's just a word. They don't even feel nothing. Mm -hmm. We'll hug somebody and they just thinking to myself, if that was the way you're going to hug me, you should not just not even hug me at all. <laughs> I remember at Haven Chapel, you were you always sang this song, the Jesus in me loves the Jesus in you. And we would hug each other and give each other a hand. I had invited a friend to work one time, from work to work to church. She told me that month following Monday, she said, Yvette, 
I said, yeah. She said, I want to thank you for inviting me to your church, but I just want you to know something. I'm smiling. I won't be back. Do you know that smile went from a hug to a friend? I'm like, what? And she said, let me tell you something. She said, I can tell. She said, I can tell a, fa a fake hug from a real hug. And she said, I could tell some of them people in that church that hugged me didn't mean that. She said, you could tell the difference. Mm. She said, so y'all might want to think about that song because if you don't mean it, don't sing it. Ooh. Don't say it. And the bar don't sure don't hug somebody because people can tell that. Wow. They feel that. And I was I went I went to my office that day and I thought about that. And I thought about that and I said, you know, she's right. So on that next, next that following Saturday morning at Crow so I told people I about what she said. Yeah, go I said, you know, I said, that really feels bad when you invite somebody to church and then they tell you they won't be back because they felt like we didn't mean what we were singing. And that's how people feel. When you say, I love you, do you mean it? Or is it just something to say? When you hug them, do you really hug them with a Holy Ghost hug? Or is it just a, hey girl, peace. I mean, people can tell. They can tell that when you say, I love you. The actions don't show. They can tell that. So I was like, so I think about that. When I hug people, I, mm. <laughs> I don't care if they don't hug me back the same way. No, I'm not going to do that. I said, because that was a that was an opening for me that, yeah, people can tell that. They can tell whether you really meant that. They can tell whether you really meant that you love them. Uh, okay, they just said it and they didn't mean it. They don't do nothing for nobody. Make sure that when you say it, that it's felt. That it's felt here. She pretty meant that she loved me. She really meant that. Not like, oh, well, they just said that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, God, I, <laughs> well, I don't know why she even said it. She could have just kept on going and not even said nothing. I mean, people feel that. Make sure that you have the right friends that are going to be in place and let you know when you're not doing right. Make sure that when you're talking to your husband that you show love. Make sure that when you're talking to your children that you show love, but at the same time, if you're supposed to get on to them for doing something wrong, do it. They might not like it, but that's what the Bible says, is that we are supposed to make sure that we teach our children the right way, not the wrong way. Because if that, they're your example. If you, you teach them wrong, and everybody's looking at them thinking, who's your mama? <laughs> I was in the store one day and this lady said, I wonder who those kids' mama is. That's really bad. <laughs> it wasn't related to me, though, but it was just the fact that this woman said that. And I was like, people say that about our children. If our children don't look like us and they talking and acting like us, people are looking at that. Them kids, wasn't, they weren't reared right. That's what they're thinking. Who was those parents that they didn't raise that child right? People are looking at that, and they are a reflection of you. Who is that parent? He trying to find out who these kids belong to. That's, that's, I, I just felt kind of bad. I mean, because they were some of us. Mm -hmm. And I was just like, hey, man, just go somewhere and it's us acting a fool. And here are these two other women at another race. Who are they, mama? Hey, that don't look good. We have to make sure that we tell our kids when you're out in public, act like you know who you are. Act like you're a child of Christ. I don't care if your good friend is over there acting the food. Don't act the food with them just because they doing it. Don't mean it's right. I mean it's right just because they doing it. You you be a difference. They might not even know. Do you know there are some people that ain't ever been to church? They don't even know who this Jesus is that you're supposed to be serving. And you to be the one to teach them who Jesus is. Teach them the reason why I act like this is because I know of a risen Savior. One that died on the cross. For my sins and for your sins. That's what we're supposed to be teaching each other. And if we're not teaching each other that, we're in error. We gotta make sure that it if it's it look if you wanna if you wanna look and sound like Jesus, you got to be making sure that you're walking and acting like Jesus. Not acting differently and then coming in church acting a different way. Oh, when you go in and get the word on Sunday, when you leave, you're supposed to leave out differently. You don't go in church one way and then walk out to church the same way. When you go to church and you get the word, when you come out, you're supposed to look different. Okay, I learned something today. I'm not living the way I'm supposed to be loving. I'm not understanding this word the way I need to be at. And if you don't understand the word, you need to get you a Sunday school book. So, so we have these, these Sunday school books and it teaches you about all these scriptures in this Bible, they break it down. They go verse by verse and they talk to you and they explain it to you. That way you understand. 
And then on top of that, I posted it on Facebook. That lesson's on Facebook. Except for now, I have started posting it on Sunday. Because there was some conflicts on Monday, so I posted on Sunday. It's already posted. Next week's lesson is already there. I even emailed that lesson out. We have got to start learning and understanding what these scriptures mean. What does it mean when he said that I'm supposed to hold it? What does it mean when he says that I'm supposed to be humble? That's what the Bible says that you're supposed to study. That's how you study. What does that really mean? I don't understand that. You read it. And then you go and find, you get you, you can get you a good concordance up there. It'll even show you different scriptures that help you understand what that just meant that I just read. And that's the reason why we give you so many scriptures, because it goes back to help you. If you didn't understand that one, well, this one should maybe help you understand what I'm talking about. And that's that point. Because when you go back in here and look these words up, it'll give you other scriptures for that word. Look up the word humble and look how many scriptures it gives you for the word humble. It's in there. It helps you to understand what that means. What it ha that means for me to be loving. It tells you that. And I think a lot of time it's that we say things and we do things because we really don't know. We really don't know what it means. But the Bible says that if you're not loving what he got for he love, you're not loving folk. You're just saying something. You're just, just saying something to be saying something and you move right on. But we've all got, um, we all have something that we have to work on. We have to work on me is maybe <laughs> and i tell him i'm a very impatient person so i know oh jesus yes. <laughs> yes all right that's all i got to say i didn't realize we had got that far yes. but anyways i love you guys and all i want you to know is that we all have some work to do and we all have to do a makeover blessings on blessings and i ask that if you don't know jesus and him as your old personal savior i ask that you just Bow your hands and say, Lord, I ask that you come into my life, that you reshape me and you remold me, that you rewrite my story, Lord, that you put me on your potter's wheel, Lord, and that you craft me into the way that I need to be, Lord. And Lord, I ask that you forgive me for my many sins. And not only that, Lord, I forgive, I release, and I set free, Lord. And I ask that you to humble me, Lord, that you touch my mind, Lord, that I walk in your will. And I walk in your word. And that when people see me, they see you. And when I speak, they hear you, Lord. And I ask that you touch my tongue, Lord. And that you touch it, Lord. That it'll take all of that out that's not according to your word, Lord. And I say thank you. And Lord, I ask that you touch my family and my friends, Lord. That we're able to learn this word, Lord. And that we're able to walk in your glory. In your name and in your honor. And we ask this in all your wonderful son Jesus' name. Amen and amen. I'm not for sure that that's how we close out, but that I don't know if you got anything to say or if we done. It's you, the and he said I took up his time. I'm sorry. I didn't get past enough time to talk to you. Talk to y'all next week. But anyways, know that we love y'all and we, we care for y'all and we want to make sure that you, you're, you're on the right path and that I'll be posting some more scriptures in here later. But anyways, y'all have a wonderful, blessed day. We'll see y'all next week if the Lord says the same. Bye-bye. Oh, yeah. I, let me, uh, let me, I got to copy and paste that in here because I haven't pasted that in here. Well, that spirit was on today. <laughs> and I, forgive me, y'all. I try not to be that long before you, but I didn't realize I had gone over my time. And... She better not never say nothing about me. <laughs> <laughs> That's for sure. That's yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry. I looked over at the time and it said 32 after and I kept on running my mouth. That's just what you do. I guess I won't say nothing else about pastor. <laughs> blessings on blessings. See you next week. The Lord says the same. Bye-bye. Thank <clears throat> you.